Hi. So, today we are going to talk about chapter 8, Wind, Storms and Cyclones. We have already covered the properties of air, like air exerts pressure, it has mass, how is it impacting the low pressure. Then we talked about the thunderstorms and the cyclones. How are they formed? What are principles are involved in it, including the uneven heating of the equator and poles, plus the uneven heating of land and water, which is resulting into the movement of wind turning into storm and later on into a cyclone. Now this video is about the effects of cyclone. So once the cyclone is there, how much destruction can it cause and what all measures we should take to avoid such amount of destruction. So when we talk about destruction caused by cyclones, there will be strong winds which push water towards the shore. Even if the storm is hundreds of kilometers away, even if storm is so far, it is going to push the water towards the shore and that is why the people on the beach are told not to go near to the shore. There is always a warning. So once from the satellite image we know that there is going to be a cyclone in this area, the fishermen and the general public is not allowed to go in the sea or near the seashore. There is always a first indication of an approaching cyclone. The low pressure in the eye will lift the water surface in the center. So we have studied that a cyclone is going to have an eye in between and this eye doesn't have any cloud or any wind speed but the area around it is going to have very high wind speed. So once the eye is near to it, the rising water is going to be 3 to 12 meters. It's, it's actually very very high, 3 to 12 meters high. The sea water then enters the low lying coastal areas and causes flooding. Because of flooding and the destruction of the homes and the infrastructure which is nearby, it, is, it causes a loss, a lot of loss of life and property. It also reduces the fertility of the soil because the soil's topmost layer, that is the fertile topsoil, gets eroded. It gets washed away with the effect of water and now the soil which is left is infertile without any humus and fertility. It is the continuous heavy rainfall may worsen. So you know apart from the cyclone and the thunderstorm, if the rain keeps if the rainfall keeps on happening, then there'll also be a flood like situation and people will be in a lot of problem. Now this leads us to the tornado. The cyclone as we have studied, cyclone is known by a different name in different parts of the world. Like in American continent we call it a hurricane, while in Japan and Philippines it is called typhoon. So you name it cyclone, you would say it's a hurricane, you say typhoon, it is actually one and the same thing. Now we come to tornado. Tornado is actually a product of cyclone. It comes from the cyclone. It can separate from the cyclone. Suppose it's a huge cyclone. Then small small tornadoes can come out of the cyclone because of the low pressure and high wind speed and spread in the nearby area. Tornado is a dark funnel shaped cloud that reaches from the sky to the ground. So the entire funnel shape, so it's going to be like this, a funnel shaped cloud from the sky is reaching to the ground. They're actually very weak but the very violent and strong ones can have a speed of 300 km per hour. That's like huge. Remember the cyclone was having wind speed of 150 to 250 km per hour. But this one is going to have 300 km per hour. The whole coastline of India, because Indian Peninsula has the largest coastline. If you see the peninsula, a lot of coastline is there and we have west side and east side. So, it is very prone to cyclones, especially the eastern part of our country where we have Bay of Bengal. And in the west coast, it is less vulnerable to cycling storm. Still, there will be cycling cyclonic storms near the area, near the Konkan coast or near the Gujarat coast. Now, what safety measures should we take? So, the first thing is there should always be a cyclone forecast and a warning service. The meteorological department, they keep on studying the satellite images and through the satellite images we can know that if suppose there is a cyclone which has taken place which is arising from the ocean and then it starts moving. So the movement also can be tracked, it can also be tracked that where will it be going next. So 90, 
nine percent it is going to be true but still there are certain deviations so a cyclone forecast helps the timely evacuation of people rapid communication so once we know that cyclone is approaching within these many hours there has to be a very rapid communication to the government agencies to the post to the fishermen to the general public announcements have to be made it has to go to the news channels it has to go to the radio stations and everywhere we have to make the announcements right from the lighthouse to the radio uh, from the tv everywhere the announcements have to be made even the police vans they keep on moving in that area telling everyone to evacuate with whatever they have because the cyclone is approaching we also can have the construction of cyclone shell uh, in cyclone prone area so we know that you know eastern coast is very cyclonic prone so there we can have cyclone shelter also where people can take shelter in case of cyclone and which doesn't get impacted by the high wind speed and a lot of rain now, what is the action which is needed on the part of the people? So, you know, government does its work, meteorological department does its work, but people also should be equally accountable for these things. So, the first thing is they should ignore, they should not ignore the warnings issued by the meteorological department. They should make necessary arrangement to shift the essential household goods, domestic animals, and vehicles to safer place. It's their duty to shift their own animals. Many uh, the coastal area people will have their own cattle. So it's their duty to shift those cattle to a nearby place and not to let them die in the cyclone. Then you should always avoid driving on roads through standing water. We should always have number of all emergency services. So if you are stuck somewhere, you should immediately call and the help will be on the way. During cyclone, the drinking water gets contaminated or the water body gets contaminated. And that is how that is why we should not drink water from there. We should not touch wet switches and fallen power lines because that's going to cause electric shock. As water, the impure water is the bad is a good conductor of uh, electricity. So the moment you touch the faulty power lines, you are going to get electric shock. We should not just go to that area for sake of fun. You know, I want to see the cyclone. What kind of destruction is it? Sort of curiosity. You should not go to such places because it's going to be very harmful. For you. you should not pressurize the rescue forces by making new demands like I, I want boat and I want life jacket and I want this and I want that I'm right really hungry right now so you forget about these people first feed me so all such demands should not be made to the rescue forces because they have a lot of people to save you should cooperate and help your neighbors and friends as much as you can so all these points should be on the part of the people now now, apart from the government agencies and the people acting during the cyclone, there is a lot of technological advancement which has happened in this field. So now because of satellites and radars, we know about a cyclone before 48 hours. That is before two days we know that a cyclone is approaching. There is a cyclone alert that it might come, it might not come, but there is an alert that cyclone is going to be there. And a cyclone warning is issued before 24 hours. So before 24 hours, we know that for sure cyclone is now approaching this place and we need to evacuate as much as, as fast as possible. The message is broadcasted every hour or half an hour depending on the situation. When the cyclone is near to the coast, there's always going to be warning signals, warning bells, there will be sirens. And you know, uh, military will be called, or CRPF will be called to evacuate people, and it happens at a very mass level. So it happens at a very large, large scale. Several national, international organizations they cooperate. So it's not like one country's problem. Actually, the entire world cooperates uh, for different countries. They cooperate. They help evacuating. They help giving shelter to those people and help those people survive for a couple of days and then rebuild whatever they have lost in the cyclone. So all these cyclone related disasters are monitored by the national and the international organization and later on a lot of NGOs work to safeguard the people to rebuild their homes and um, make their life a better one to live. Now this chapter was all about wind, storm, cyclones. We now learned how are they made and what are their effects and what precautions should we take when we have cyclone. So with this note, we're completing this chapter, but I want you to research a lot on the cyclones which are happening across the world. 
the reason why so now because of global warming also the pattern of cyclone is changing and the meteorological department is finding it very difficult to understand the reason why certain areas are having these uh, cyclones so uh, because of global warming there is going to be warming up of oceans there is going to be melting up of ice caps uh, the rain pattern is changing the season pattern is changing so how is it affecting these three phenomena is what you all have to find out with this note i want to say thank you to you and we'll meet in the next video with the next chapter thank you